what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. So many of you today. Good to see Sister Liz and company, my friend. God bless you. Good to see you. I'm happy to see y'all. Y'all have made my day. I'm overjoyed. Good to see uh, Reverend Gail and Elma Q. I mean, I, I can just start calling names, but I don't want to miss nobody. But listen, God is a good God. Um, the writer David and I believe it's befitting today, I believe it's befitting uh, through what the society is going through the writer today is trying to change the atmosphere of our life the writer today is trying to show us whether you recognize it or not, uh, the goodness of God. Uh, the writer uh, is trying to show us and we through the word of God are uh, going to try to help you to realize that, that in case you didn't know it, God is still good. Even in the midst of you going through what you're going through, uh, the word comes to tell us that God is good. 
Y'all, y'all stay woke on me, musician. I, I think today I might holler a little bit. Y'all just help me. I just feel, I feel good down in my sanctified soul. Uh, David started the word by saying, I will extol thee. My God, O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. He said, every day will I bless thee. And I will praise thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. He goes on to say, great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. David said, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. And of thy works, wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. I'm going to stop right there. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers. And the doers of his word. In my introduction, I want to say that God is the original definition of good. In fact, He is good in and of himself. Uh, If you lend me your ear just for a moment, I want to share two stories that will help us to see and realize just how good God is. I believe that at the end of these stories, uh, we will detect the common denominator they share. Uh, This first one is about a parable Jesus told about our Heavenly Father. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy man who early one morning dropped by the marketplace, which was the ancient uh, equivalent to what we call the unemployment office. Uh, There, he hired a bunch of guys to work in his vineyard for an agreed rate of pay. A few hours later, he went back again and again later the same day to the unemployment office. Each time employing more and more men. In fact, as Jesus told it, the owner of the vineyard hired extra workers right up, um, right up until quitting time. The last man that was hired just one hour before sunset. At the last light of the day, faded. 
the workers gathered to receive their pay. They were lined up in order from last one hired and working backward. And this is when Jesus took and paid every man the same wages. Yes, sir. Uh, every man uh, was given a day wages no matter how long they had worked that day. They received the same pay. Yes, All right. All right. Uh, I don't have to tell you uh, what was happening in the backdraft. Uh, some of the fellows that had started working earlier felt as though they was getting a bum deal. Uh, they began to complain among themselves. And finally, one of them was bold enough to speak out and said, I believe what you're doing is wrong. Uh, he said, we bore our burdens in the heat of the day. And you go and hire all these people at the last minute and you give them the same pay you've given us. Uh, Jesus put it in this way, he said, didn't we agree together what I would pay you? Uh, he said, I kept my word to you. Uh, uh, what I said I was going to do, I've done. Now, are you just upset because I'm good? Uh, the second story uh, I read takes place in a classroom uh, at Hannibal College in Missouri. Uh, this took place back in 2002. It was the day for final exam. Uh, the writer has it that Denise Vanderman walked into the classroom minutes before the professor arrived. Everybody in the room was doing last minute cramming. Then the professors enter the room and take a few minutes to review. Most of it was familiar, uh, but there were some things that no one remembered ever hearing. The professor responded and he began to pass out the test. Everybody having to keep their test papers down until they was told to turn it over. Uh, finally, the professor said, everyone turn over your paper. Uh, when they turned over their paper, their names was written in, and all of the answers was filled in. Uh, the professor took the test for the students, and everybody was looking around shocked, and they began uh, to speak to one another and they wanted to know why the professor uh, took the test for the people. The, the professor said to them, he said, uh, because you work so hard, because you sacrifice time and time again, he said, I'm going to show you just how good I really am. <laughs> when you think about story one and you think about 
Story two, the one thing they have in common is they show the goodness of somebody else. Uh, if you want to see God for who he really is, uh, here's a good starting point. Uh, it says, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. First Chronicles chapter number 16, verse 34. Another writer said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 34, chapter number 8. Then it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And his courts with praise. Thank you. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure through all generations. Yes, Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. Uh, when Moses boldly pleaded with God, Moses said, please show me your glory. Uh, he was asking God to see uh, God for who he really was. Yes, he said, show me as much as you can stand, Lord. So what did God show him? According to Exodus 33rd chapter, verses 19 and 20, he said, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim the name Yahweh before you. Uh, Moses wanted to see God's glory. Uh, God showed him something so wonderful and accessible that it caused the skin of Moses' face to glow with the radiance of God's presence. Uh, in other words, God showed Moses his goodness. Uh, my first point I want to leave you with today is God's goodness defined. Uh, God's goodness divine. We sing about it. And we sing it often. But do we fully understand the attribute of God? Uh, let's meditate on the goodness of God. Uh, the Bible defines God goodness in two ways. One has to do with his character. Uh, the other focus on his actions. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 68, catches both when it says of God, you are good Thank you. and you do what is good. The first half of the verse focuses on the fact that God is good by nature. This is he in his moral excellence. Uh, extraordinary beautiful. Deeply glad and bountifully. But since this is God we're talking about, uh, this goodness ascribed to him is raised to the highest of possible levels. Uh, think about it, God is the original definition of good. He is good in and out of himself. Uh, for us, goodness is an added quality. But it comes naturally for him. Uh, God is not just the greatest of beings, he is the best. Tell somebody, God is the best. God is the best. Uh, that's exactly 
what Jesus meant when he said, no one is good but one. Uh, that is God. And you'll find that in Mark chapter number 10, verse number 18. Uh, we call all kinds of things good. Uh, this state is good. Uh, he's a good friend. That was a good movie. But all that we call good on earth is tainted and imperfect. We must understand that God alone is goodness itself. But how do you see the true character of a person? Oh, I like your kind of a question. Uh, by their actions. So the second Strain of the definition of God goodness uh, concentrates on what God does. Uh, the Bible describes him as his kindness. Uh, his mercy. His steadfast love. His generosity. Uh, God is deserving of praise at all times. Why? Because he's good. I wonder, have you ever thought of God as generous toward you? Have you ever thought about really how good God really been good to you? Even in the midst of your struggles, even in the midst of your pain, have you really considered just how good God's been to you? I know none of us have been perfect all of our life. But even in our imperfect state, do you know that God loves you? Uh, uh, when I consider just, uh, I, all I can do is consider Baal's life. Uh, when I think of me coming up as a boy, uh, some of the things that I've done in my life, some of the things that I said in my life, and God yet loved me in spite of myself. Tell somebody, God is good. Uh, when I felt like I wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die, uh, trying to identify who I was, as a man tried to figure out where I was going, uh, running into bumps in the road, running into wall after wall, uh, mistakes after mistakes. But I, as I stand here today, I'm able to recognize that God is good. And some of us need to take time and give God credit for who he really is to you. If you don't mind, look around to your neighbor and tell him God is good. Uh, in spite of all the baggage. And some of us got some baggage. I, I ain't talking about nobody. I got baggage myself. In spite of all the baggage, yeah. uh, in spite of all our junk, uh -huh. in spite of all of our hangups, yeah, yeah. uh, we can truly say that God yeah. is still good. Yeah. Uh, the second thing I want to leave you with is how God reveals his goodness to us. Uh, uh, let me give you three specific channels. God uses to broadcast his goodness to us. Uh, number one, his natural blessings. Uh, this is the lowest level in which he expressed 
his goodness uh, to the people. Uh, David said in 145, a hymn of praise that celebrates God. It said in verse 3 and 4, he shouts out, Yahweh is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. He says, one generation will declare your works to the next and proclaim your mighty acts. Uh, verses 7 through 9 describe the older generation uh, will say to the younger, they will give a testimony of God's goodness and will joyfully sing of his righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger, great is his faithfulness and love. Uh, verse number nine said, the Lord is good to everyone. Who is included in the word everyone? Tell somebody, I'm included. Uh, 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 no matter what people might say about him. Uh, I was reading some stuff today on Facebook and I almost got angry. I almost got confused because uh, when you start reading the hatred of people, yeah. you, you'll wonder uh, what part of God do they know? Uh, you begin to see uh, what men really feel. Uh, Sometimes you can see that, that, that the anger of people come from a different area, but it doesn't express the love of God. Uh, we need to understand that God never told us that the road was going to be easy. But what he did promise us is that he will make a way of escape from us. Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, the songwriter said, and all he done for me. Yeah. It said, my soul cries out, hallelujah. 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 I praise God for saving me. Thank you. Uh, preacher, how do you know he's good? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I can give you five reasons real quick. Uh, the first reason is he woke me up this morning. Uh, number two is he woke me up this morning. Number three is he woke me up this morning. Number four, he woke me up this morning. Uh, number five, he started me on my way. Uh, when I woke up this morning, to see. I had ears to hear. I had legs to walk. Uh, I had a mouth to speak. I can clap my hands this morning. I don't know what you know about him, but I can tell you for myself that God is good. I don't know what he been to you, Every 
as a nation having seen suffering. We as a nation have become ungrateful. My grandfather used to say we're born with a silver spoon in our mouth. I'm going to keep on saying it even through this pandemic. God, God allowed a flow of money through this place. People didn't have to work. They didn't have to stress out. All they had to do was look up and live. And yet, in spite of all that, we won't give credit to God. Some of us had he not made provisions? Some of us would have been in the streets. But God saw, even through any Republican Party or Democratic Party, the word says the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. And he turns it however he chooses to. He didn't just take care of one group of persons or people. In the roughest of times, y'all, if I was going to lose weight, this would have been the perfect time from March to now, I should have shrunk down to 120 pounds. But God in his goodness, it was more money floating around. I ain't bragging. I'm just grateful. We couldn't go out the house. We was buying food, food, food. We wake up in the morning, she said, honey, you want breakfast? Yes. Come out later, you want one? I said, we just ate, but yes. <laughs> you have hours after that, I got dinner prepared. Uh, yes. <laughs> We, when you look back at it now, we, we have to say, man, we woke up one morning and said, we just tired of eating. That, that's how good God has been to the American people, not just me. And somebody woke up every one of those days with the audacity to complain. You ain't never got $900 on no unemployment. But somebody woke up, elder, complaining. That there was nothing to buy. There was no movies to go to. There was no shopping. All you had to do was just give some of your money to your bills. If that ain't good, then you tell me. I seen people standing in the grocery line because they they food voucher was increased. And while they were standing in that car, they was, I need some more money. This ain't enough. I'm tired of this. It just complaining. And I turned around. I got one basket. 
They got three baskets of food, Ricardo. And they were complaining. I was, I wanted to say, look, you don't just get three baskets of food out the sky. Somebody been good to you. They were shutting jobs down. They said, but y'all remain open. During the season, y'all are much needed. Thank you. Uh, we have essential workers, people, that need child care. Can we send them to you? Thank you. Don't worry about trying to buy lunch for the kid during this season. We develop a food program for you. You just need to go by and pick up the food. Thank you. Have you really sat down and counted up your blessings? Simple. Do it now. Why are you sitting there? Just begin to think. And as you come across some things that he's done for you, just, just acknowledge by saying thank you. Now I just thought of another one. Thank you. I just thought about that. These last few minutes I've been talking. Breath has been flowing through my body. Thank you. I can see. Thank you. I can speak. Thank you. My wife was hopping around for the last few weeks. But she walked in here today jumping around. Thank you. It could have been another way. Somebody just tell them thank you. We must develop an attitude of thankfulness. The word comes to just tell us, just remember, Kenny, the goodness of the Lord. And give him praise where he deserves it. Now, if he ain't done nothing, don't say nothing. But some of us know if the walls could talk, ooh, we thank you. I didn't walk into church this morning and my life appeared on the screen. Thank you. I didn't get stroked being somewhere where I shouldn't have been. Thank you. He gave me another opportunity to ask for forgiveness. Thank you. It ain't that bad. Thank you. I might not be driving what I want to drive, but I'm driving. Thank you. See, let's start from the smaller stuff. Look at these children running around. Healthy. You ain't got to think of nothing hard. Thank you. Nobody in here sick. Thank you. He's good, Redonna. And what makes what makes him give more is when he sees his children. David said, I will extol thee. I was willing to do 43 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had a pastor to tell me, you should be grateful to me because after all, I'm going to have to raise your children. Thank you. I raised my own children. Thank you. In spite of what the outcome was supposed to be, thank you. It don't take a rocket scientist. He's been good to us. Psalm used to say, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. 
See what God has done. If you begin to count your blessings, while you count them, you'll see that you really don't have that much to be complaining about. So what you stub your toe? You done it. So what he allows us to go through? So his glory can be revealed in our life. Yes. COVID has got out of control and it's getting worse. Yeah. But look, God is good. Yeah. And if you don't get nothing else out of what I said today, I want you to go away from here remembering to give God praise because of his goodness. David says, generations will declare your glory. For these babies that's coming up, it's our responsibility to make sure that we give them a right perspective of God. That's why we got so many rebellious children out there. Because many of the parents stopped talking about the goodness of God. In the land of the how should they hear? David said it's, it, it's our job, the generation's job, to train the younger ones that God is good and his mercy is everlasting. And it's true. Mama going to say it. Would you hear AJ? Would you hear Nana saying it? Royce going to say it. When you hear Kenny and Portia saying it. DeAnthony and Zephaniah are going to say it. When you hear Kevin and Jasmine saying it. He is good. Look at somebody and tell them he is good. Look at somebody and tell them he's good. He's good. He's good. My grandchildren are going to say it because they're going to hear their grandparents declaring it. He is good. Lynn's children gonna declare it because they're gonna hear their mother say, He is good. All over the building, just lift your hands.
We're getting ready for our giving. For those of you who give in, there's several ways you can give to this ministry. You can give through our cash app, dollar sign, Roaming Church. You can give from our website, www.roamingchurch.life on PayPal or Givelify. Or you can call your CNN to one of our financial officers. You can pay by Square, credit card or debit card. Your information is confidential. You can't beat God giving. Even in spite of all that's going on, God is still giving.